Well, guys, as always, Paul has a lot to say, and it's kind of hard to make sense of all of it, isn't it? What is he talking about? Well, we're not going to dive into all of this that's contained in that reading today, but we're going to get at some of the crucial and key points here. But I want to start us out um, uh, in the beginning. He says that God has given us this new way. God's given us a new way. Well, what is he talking about a new way? Well, he's actually in the chapter before this, which we jumped over, uh, he talks about this new way, the old covenant versus the new covenant. He talks about how, you know, it used to be in the Old Testament that faith was based on following a list of rules. He says, but now Jesus changed everything. Faith isn't about following a list of rules. Instead, it's about receiving the Spirit. It's about living in freedom and under God's grace to share God's light in the world. That that's this new way, this new way of life in the Spirit. So there's a lot of pieces around that, and I want to ask you to think about a couple questions here, because what Paul talks about today, I think, gets at the core of this. Uh, what do you think? What, what are our lives about? What are, what's our purpose? What are we trying to achieve in life? I, I think all of us have some sort of a, 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 a sense of we're operating out of some kind of a sense of where we're trying to go with our lives. We, there's something we're trying to achieve, something, uh, a place we're trying to get to. But all of us are doing the things we do in our life because we're, we're headed to a certain place. We've got a certain destination in mind. And sometimes we think that that is around a career. Sometimes that might be around acquiring enough money or enough stuff. It might be around um, having this, a certain kind of home or having a certain kind of popularity but all of us have something that we're working towards, a place we're trying to get with our lives. And I think today Paul calls us to a radically different way of thinking about this. A radically different way of thinking about this. And I think that's because as humans we very easily get off track with this idea. We very easily head down our own direction. And we find ourselves... Uh, you know, we, we, we find ourselves coming to places in our life and wondering, well, how did I get here? Why am I not happy with my life? Why, why does my life not seem to be what I in, thought it should be? Why does there seem to be all these holes inside of me? What's this all about? I think Paul's speaking to some of those things today. And so I want to invite you to join with me in, in thinking about this some more in this conversation. So... Paul has this really interesting thing to say here in the middle. And I want you to hear this again. Uh, verses 6 and 7. He says, For God, who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not from ourselves. Now, don't we build our lives around some kind of notion of trying to make ourselves great? Right? Whether, you know, we're trying to build up our own facade of greatness in our lives. And whatever that is that makes us feel safe or great, Right? And I listed off some of those things a little while ago. But somehow we want to build up something that projects to the world strength, right? Strength, confidence. We've got it all together. And Paul sort of flips that on its head today and he says, you want to know what we're like as humans? Let's be honest. He says, we are fragile clay jars. We're fragile clay jars. Now, Follow me in this thinking today. Now let's start with the idea of where does a clay vessel, a clay jar, where does it come from? How does it come to be? The earth. And, and how does it come from the earth? What happens? It has to be created by somebody. Right? So this earth, this clay is taken, and it's very purposefully fashioned, molded, shaped on purpose 
for a particular purpose, right? You look at some of the pictures on the sermon slide here. Each of those jars, each of those clay vessels was designed for a particular purpose, right? Now, each of those does different kinds of things and might hold different materials. Or they are all, though, intentionally created, designed, shaped, molded for a specific purpose. Paul, first of all, wants you and I to remember today that we're not an accident. We didn't just come to be. We were actually created purposefully by a creator who intentionally made us. That God made you and I, particularly how we are, to do certain kinds of things in this world. Specifically, purposefully, you and I were created. Now that in and of itself, I think, gives us value and worth, doesn't it? God made us. But vessels like this, clay jars, first and foremost, are made to contain something, right? They're meant to hold something. And as Paul talks about this today, he says that we were made to hold the light of Christ. He says, he says, for God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts. And he says, we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure that makes it clear our great power is from God and not from us. He says, we're made to contain, to hold God, the Holy Spirit. This light of Christ is meant to live in us. And I, I want to ask you to honestly reflect today. What are you containing? What's filling you? Are you being filled daily by the Spirit of God and the light of Christ? Or are we filling our containers with other kinds of stuff? Right? Because we live in a culture that's constantly trying to saturate us with all sorts of things. All sorts of empty promises. Right? Our culture is always saying, if you want to be happy, if you want to have fulfillment in your life, fill your life with this thing. Fill your life with this. Go buy this. Go get that. Go do this thing over here. Fill your life with these things and you'll be happy. And why is it that none of that stuff ever leaves us at the end of the day going, wow, my life is awesome? Because it's all cheap lies. It's all cheap lies. Paul presents us today with a really um, interesting paradox. He says, if you want to find life, well, you have to let go of it. You have to let go of it. You have to give it up. And instead of trying to chase after all these things that we want to fill our lives with, instead, we invite God to fill us. We invite the Holy Spirit to fill us. We let go and say, okay, God, maybe... Maybe I want to start relying on you rather than chasing after all these false promises myself. God, you fill me. And so he says, we face this reality that we are these fragile clay jars. I mean, a, a clay vessel like this, well, there's a certain amount of durability there. At the end of the day, they can, they can be smashed and broken, right? And some of us have been at that place in life where we felt completely smashed and broken. And thanks be to God, God puts us back together again. But Paul's reminding us that this false notion that somehow we can be big and powerful and we can make our own lives great, it's a big lie. But the incredible paradox is actually we were created purposefully and God wants to fill us with his light, and did you catch, he said, not only this great treasure, but great power. It's very clear in the New Testament that believers expected to be filled, when they're filled with the Holy Spirit, expected to experience the power of God in their lives. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think we talk about this much in the church. Have you experienced the power of God in your life? Have you ever felt like right now residing in me is the power of God? Now, now, I don't mean that in a way that says like we're these powerful gods. What I mean is 
When you experience the Holy Spirit in your life, you can feel God's presence in really powerful ways. Now, sometimes that might be in a peaceful way. Sometimes that might be in a joyful way. Sometimes that power of God, though, is in a way in which um, God directs you in ways that you've never been directed before. And some people get gifts from the Holy Spirit, like the gift of healing or the gift of prophecy. Some people get those kinds of powers from the Holy Spirit. Those are real things. And yet, we don't want anything to do with this idea of fragile clay jars that need to be filled with the power of God because we'd rather fill our lives with all the false lies in our culture today, right? Because it just seems so much more enticing and interesting. But listen to what Paul says. Because we all experience these things, and then what? He says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Paul, who is writing this text, I want you to understand that he suffered, I dare say, far more than any of us. Now, I know I don't know all of your particular circumstances. And we all go through a lot of hard times in life. But this man isn't just making stuff up. Okay, more than once, Paul was beaten nearly to death. More than once, he was beaten nearly to death. For one reason only. Because he wouldn't stop telling people about Jesus. Because he wouldn't stop telling people about Jesus, he was thrown in prison for many years. And at one point, he was put on a prisoner ship to be taken to Rome to prison. And on the journey there, the ship he was on uh, got into this great storm in the Mediterranean Sea. And on the ship sank, and he almost drowned. This guy suffered More than I think we could imagine. And what does he say to us? He says, we're pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We're hunted down, which he literally was, and we're not abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. You see, Paul says, we are these fragile earthen vessels. When it comes down to it, at the end of the day, we will get knocked down. Life happens. But guess what? We're never abandoned. We are not alone. We can rely on God rather than ourselves when we get to those places where we've got nothing left. We can rely on God. So back to where we started today. What are you being filled with? What are you being filled with? As this earthen vessel, this clay jar created by God for certain purposes in this world, are you living into the life that God wants for you? Are you filling your vessel with other stuff? Now, the incredible thing about God is he doesn't chase us down and say, hey, get your life together. No, he just, he's waiting. And when we turn to him, he says, welcome home. Now, let me fill you up. Let me fill you up. Oh, and by the way, a container meant to hold something, ultimately, the stuff that's put in the container isn't meant to stay there forever, is it? It's put in there to eventually, ultimately be poured out. And that's the life that Paul is inviting us into today. He's saying, listen, folks, recognize that you've been created with a purpose. Invite God to fill you with the God stuff, and then use your life to share it. Today we said at baptism that Jennifer Lynn was filled with the light of Christ. And now the rest of her life, we get to help her shine that light. We get to help her share it with the world. And that's what Paul's inviting you and I to today. He's saying, listen, let's just stop chasing life for ourselves and instead say, okay, God, how do you want me to live? How do you want me to change this world for the better? Right? You and I, we get to be the ones to change the world, to make a difference. Renee? Yeah, so I was just going to say, I think that's one of the things that I've learned 
Yeah. Yeah. Renee talked about a book she read called God Uses Broken Cracked Pots. And, uh, and the idea is, you know, so all of us have cracks. We've got cracks, maybe even holes. But the thing is, is that's how the light gets out. The light shines through the cracks. The light shines through the holes. And that's what we believe as Christians. Not that we have to be perfect people to do God's work. In fact, it's the opposite. When we recognize that we're not, then God can shine through those cracks, through those holes and make a difference in this world. We're invited to do that. Say, okay, God, put me back together and now shine through me. Shine through me. Let's pray. Let's pray. Lord, today um, we're, we're confronted with this reality that we're not as strong as we think we are. That you created us on purpose and that you intend to use us for important things in this world. So help us, Lord, to allow you to fill us. Help us, Lord, to allow you to shine through us. Help us to live the lives you intend for us to live. Sharing your light with the world. Pouring out your gifts to the world. God, we pray today that you um, help us to spend time listening to you. Help us to spend time inviting you in so that we can be filled to overflowing. We pray these things in Jesus' name.